All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Bodybuilding Legend Show. I'm your host, John Hansen, and we are broadcasting live out of the Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, Florida. Our guest this week on the Bodybuilding Legend Show is Rich Gaspari, the Dragon Slayer. Rich was one of the best bodybuilders in the 1980s. He took second place to Lee Haney three times at the Mr. Olympia from 1986 through 1988, and he was the first Arnold Classic winner back in 1989. We're going to talk to Rich about his early beginnings in bodybuilding, how he got started training, his years as a, as a teenage bodybuilder, all the way up to the national level. Rich was one of the youngest pros ever, winning the Mr. Universe at 21 years old. So we're going to talk to Rich about his experiences and the sport of bodybuilding. He's had a very extensive career and a very rewarding career. So let's take a short break to hear from our sponsors, and when we come back, we're going to be joined with our interview with Rich Gaspari. We'll be right back with the Bodybuilding Legend Show. Be sure to check out NFE, No Freaking Excuses, All Natural Warrior Supplements, offering pure isolate, whey protein, essential multivitamins, thermogenic fat burners, all available at NFE.com and Southern Muscle in Brandon, Florida. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legend Show, and my special guest today is the Dragon Slayer himself, Rich Gaspari, calling in from New Jersey. How you doing, Rich? Great to be here, uh, John. I love it. Yeah. Uh, glad, to, glad to be able to talk to you. Yeah, great to have you on the show. Um, all right, Rich, well, uh, let's talk about your bodybuilding career. Let's go to the very beginning. Um, you and I have been friends for uh, several years now, and... Um, I think I've told you this, you know, we're, we're the same age and I think we both started training about the same time at 14 years old, 13 years old. And yeah. uh, we both uh, were inspired, I think, to become bodybuilders from reading the comic books when we were younger and we both liked the superhero comic books. So talk about that, Rich. Talk about how you got started in bodybuilding. And I, I know, I remember once you told me that um, I think you had mono even, right? When you were younger and you started off, you were really underweight. Yeah. Yeah. Um First of all, you know, go back to like when I was 11, you know, 10, 11, 12, you know, I was a big fan of the comic books and, and you know, I got to read the comic books, uh, you know, like my favorite, of course, was the Incredible Hulk, uh -huh. was that guy with the most muscle. Right. Uh, and I loved like reading these comic books. It's really funny as a kid, you know, under my bed, you know, I want to be the Hulk. I would write underneath my bed. My parents saw, showed me like where I'd write, you know, and it was like six, seven, eight where I would write this thing because I was intrigued <laughs> by, by muscle. My, my dad was a mason, so although he wasn't a bodybuilder, he, was, he had genetics like me. If you, I think if, if he was a bodybuilder, he would have been also a great bodybuilder, but he was ripped, veiny like me. He had the same genetics, abs. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at my dad, I was always intrigued by how he had so much muscle, and he always say, just come work with me you know, you know, for 10 hours out in the field picking up <laughs> bricks and blocks, but that wasn't my thing. You know, but going back as a kid, when I was 12 years old, one of my friends, you know, I went down to his house, was playing with, the, you know, with this kid. Uh, his name was Johnny. I remember Johnny Curtis. And he was went to his basement. His dad had a gym set and there he had stacks of muscle builder magazines. So there were magazines, pictures of Arnold, uh, Robbie Robinson, Lou Frigno, Franco Colombo, Dave Draper. So as a kid, I started looking at these magazines. Now, I, I looked at these comic books of these, these heroes, now all of a sudden, there were real people that looked like that with muscle. Right. And I was just so amazed by these, these uh, magazines, these muscle builder magazines, these old Joe Weider magazines, that I would come see him, you know, my friend, just to read his magazines. So <laughs> I would just sit there all day and he'd be wanting to play, you know, ball. And I'd be, wait a minute, let me just look at this magazine that your dad's got. 
and I, I would always try to bring him home, you know, but, you know, he would say, no, you, my dad will kill you if you, you, know, kill me, you know, if he loses any of his uh, muscle builder magazines. So I really got into it by reading Joe, Joe Weider, you know, again, inspired me by, you know, his athletes seeing, you know, like I said, the, my heroes back then were Arnold. It's funny because Arnold had these little training manuals. He actually, his name was Arnold Strong. Right. He didn't I remember have Arnold that. Schwarzenegger at first. And I saw these courses that he was selling. And then I saw Lou Frigno. And then I identified more with like Franco Colombo because he was Italian. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, my parents are Italian. He's Italian. Lou Frigno's Italian. Um, so for me, it was like just amazed to see these guys look like the way they did. So that just got me inspired to one day want to be a bodybuilder, but I was still too young. So I started training when I was about 13 years old. And um, when I started, I was next to a, a, a college, Rutgers University. Okay. It was, um, it's, it's, it's a Jersey college, but Rutgers, you know, they're a pretty good college. They, yeah, you know, they, I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd actually sneak into the gym at 13. And you had this big gym. So me and my friend from high school, we were about 13, 14. We'd take our bikes and get in the back. And it was just this big, you know, basketball gymnasium in, in the corner. They had weights. So that door was always open during the spring. <laughs> so I'd sneak in and lift weights until I got caught. And then they threw us out. So then I had to get, the, so then I had to get a weight set. You know, where I asked my parents for Christmas, can you get me a weight set? And they got me, you know, one of the old weight sets, the York barbell sets. Right. Uh, right. Which I bought a book um, by a bodybuilder named Tony Randall, if you recall. Yeah. 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 Tony Randall was back, I guess, in the 50s. But he had this book book out. And it was like a how-to book. But it was a book that, I mean, this guy was really obese or really heavy. Mm-hmm. He went from mm-hmm. being real heavy to becoming Mr. Universe. So I also followed his courses when, you know, when I was 14 years old, I started following his courses also, you know, with the weights that I had at home. Okay. Okay. No, yeah, I was just, we just did an interview with Mike Katz last week, and uh, a lot of people may not understand this today because there's so many health clubs out there, and there's so many huge health clubs, but back like in the 70s when you and I were kids, there weren't too many places to go to work out. I mean, there weren't even hardly any gyms around, right? Uh, well, that's 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 funny. Uh, you know what you're saying is because I come from this you know town in New Jersey. I mean, New Jersey's not a you know uh, it's a suburban town. You know, I'm not. I don't live in the city, but there was a gym in this town near me when I, I found out it was a gym, this dingy gym in the basement called Health and Strength. Mm-hmm. It was a hardcore gym. So at 14 years old, I found out about this gym. So I took my bike there because one of the one of these other guys in school were training there. So this guy, um, his name was Paul DeRugio, I remember his name. So he was built and I said, where are you going, you know, to train? And he told me this health and strength. So I took my bike there and this was like one of those hardcore mm-hmm. G gyms in the basement. You know, all these guys were powerlifters, bodybuilders. And when I was 14, I joined that gym. That's where I learned a lot on bodybuilding because I was, I was called Mr. Question. I'd ask everybody <laughs> there, you know, you know, what do I do to build my arms? What do I do to build my chest? And I was very, very just motivated. I actually got to see my first bodybuilder. His name was Joe Spooner. I don't know if you know who he oh, yeah, is. Oh yeah. I remember him. Yeah. Joe Spooner. Um, he competed in, uh, I guess the, um, the Dan Lurie organization, not yeah. the, uh, not the IFBB NPC, but he was this Caribbean guy with this little, little waist, he almost had a physique very similar to Serge Nubre. Yeah. And he had 20 inch arms. So when I, when I got to that gym, you know, it's the first time I got to see a real bodybuilder. And I was just like, Oh my God, this guy's a living, you know, a living superhero. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I watched, you know, I was in a gym, I was watching him train to see what he did to, you know, to get himself to look like that. So he was another like inspiration to me, um, to get built. Until when I was actually the same, about the same age, I got to see my hero that, you know, that was in those magazines, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger was appearing at a local mall um, and he was signing the book. I think it was the, uh, Encyc- is it the Encyc- this first book? The Education Encyc- of a Bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. So I went there with my bike. First of all, I had no money, but I went there as 14, rode my bike there, um, waiting in this long line because by then... It was already eighties. He was already he already did Conan. He was already a famous actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got to the line. I had this scrap of paper, and I put it in front of him. 
you know, and I, you know, I said, Arnold, one day I want to be just like you. I want to be a pro bodybuilder. I want to be the best bodybuilder in the world. You know, and I said this in my speech when I got the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. And I remember his words. He goes, you need to train hard, eat right, and even yourself. <laughs> and, I, you know, and I took that paper and I go, okay, I got the words of wisdom from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm going to pack it up and, you know, really train hard, you know, and, you know. And eat, you know, and try to build my muscle. He was, I mean, he was a great, he was a great inspiration to me. And, you know, on the way, as 14 years old, I got to meet bodybuilders like Boyer Co. And, you know, Dennis Tenorino that came to visit uh, and do seminars in the local gyms. Those okay. gyms from that, when I was trained at 13, 14, was the late 70s. Then by the early 80s, gyms started popping up more yeah. and more. Yeah. Now, when did you do your first contest, Rich? When you were like 16 or something? I was 16 years old, and, and that health and strength, that gym that I talked about it at 16, this other guy, this Paul DeRuggio, he was the guy that got me, you know, that I found out about this gym, and he was the one always, like, chastising me, saying, yeah, you can never beat me, you know, mm -hmm. you're nothing. So I know he was going in this show called the Physique. It was called the Physique uh, 80, or I think it was the Physique 79 or Physique. I was 16 years old. He was 17. Mm -hmm. I decided to compete in this show because I wanted to beat this kid. So I went into the show, um, and I came in fifth place at, at, on a teenage show right. at 16 years old. He didn't play. So although I didn't win the show, I got to beat this kid that was like that we had this rivalry for. Right. And, and then he had great respect for me because then he was like, wow, you are pretty good because he saw me. you know, And I didn't know what I was doing when I competed in my first show. I, I died at too strict. Mm -hmm. uh, went on a very low, low carb diet. I followed, you know, the diets from the old timers, just straight protein. Right. Uh, I felt like crap, you know, when I did this <laughs> diet and I go, there must be a better way to do this. Cause this is hell. Just eating protein all day. Right. You know, little by little, I figured out my body. Did you have uh, any tanning stuff on Rich? I remember, I remember the first show I did. I did my first show when I was 16 too. And I remember in the, in the entry form, it said no oil. So I thought they meant no tanning. So I went in there in December in Chicago, white as a ghost. At 16 years old, my first show. You know, actually, our gym was a little evolved because there were bodybuilders in that gym. Okay. And they got to use, um, what was the stuff that was for vitilate? It was for people who had, had skin patches. It was just, it was almost like pro tan. Like sudden tan or something? No, it was not called sudden tan. I forgot the name of it back then. But it was, it was for people that had an issue with white patches in their skin. Was it dioderm? And, Diaderm. I'm yeah, sorry, that's yeah. diaderm. <laughs> so diaderm um, was the first tanning product that I used, but it kind of made you look green. Yeah, you know, used it. I mean, you painted yourself, and you had a tinge of green to it. Little did I know that was an applicator. You're supposed to wash it off, right. but I didn't know that then. So I painted myself with this color, and I actually mixed in iodine yeah. because back then you put iodine because it had a little bit of redness, a red tinge to it, with the diaderm, and it gave you a nice, a, a better color. So. I competed in the spring about April. Of course, you can't lay out in New Jersey in April. Yeah, yeah. I had to use, so I had to use, uh, you know, this, this diaderm and, you know, and then baby oil with um, putting iodine in the baby oil. And that's what you rub on yourself because that's what I saw the other guys in the gym do. So I did have some color, although I was a little green. I, I ended up looking like my hero, the Hulk, you know, <laughs> going into the, the, my first couple shows. How did your physique look in your first show, Rich, at 16? <laughs> I mean, I had, you know, I went into this show at 16 years old and I was there to, you know, I was already very competitive. I wanted to win. Of yeah. course, I want to eat this kid, Paul DeRuggio, but, um, you know, I wanted to win. Then I started thinking, you know what? I could be a good bodybuilder because at 16, I was already pretty veiny. Um, you know, I was, I had that vascularity and, and I had good abs. I always had good abs and my legs were, you know, one of my strong points right away. I mean, when I was 16, 17, I was already squatting 405 and, yeah. Doing some crazy stuff on leg press, you know, with ten plates. So I saw that I saw that I had potential, but of course at sixteen, you know, I needed my waist was a little thick, my shoulders uh, needed more muscle on, you know, on my caps, uh, my arms needed more, you know, just did more roundness. So mm -hmm. it, there need to be work, but there was potential. So and I didn't win. I went up to a couple judges and I asked them, and, and the judges were like, "Well, you know," he goes, "How old are you, kid?" And I go. I'm 16. He goes, you got a lot of time. Don't worry about it. He goes, you know, go to your next show. So this this show called the physique. It was it was a New Jersey show called the physique. 
Okay. And it was 80, 81. So anyways, you know, I decided, okay, I went into that show and I wasn't going to go any other show until I won that show. Okay. So that teenage show. So a couple of years later at um, 18 years old, you know, 17, I went into show, came in third. Then at 18 years old, I competed in the physique. And when I went into the physique, uh, I think it was the physique 81, I ended up winning the overall, winning the show. And it was funny because... They kept telling me to go into the open because I was that I was that good. I had the potential, looked that good. And now the kid who's in the heavyweight went into the open, won the overall in the men's division, but he couldn't beat me as a teenager. <laughs> so, so they knew, you know, the judges kept saying, "Go into the open." And I go, "I can't go into the open. I can't go against thirty-year-olds." Yeah. So when I knew that I beat this teenager that won the open, that I had potential right. and beat bodybuilder, and I was at eighteen years old, and then by the time I was nineteen. I started competing in the in, in the teenage. It wasn't a teenage America. What happened was I ended up competing in called the America's Cup, which is run by um, a promoter called Lou Zwick, mm -hmm. you know, who he is. Yeah. And he run, still runs shows. He convinced me to go into his show instead of going to Teenage America, which I should have done. Yeah, won the America's Cup. Went against uh, uh, one of the bodybuilders that became very very well known for being. Now I can't recall his name because I'm black. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can't think, but. He, he was a big, big, you know, a, a black guy, but really, really big. He was, a, he was my age, a teenager. You're talking about Victor, Victor, Victor Richards. Richards. Yeah. So Victor Richards went into this teenage show against me. Now I was ripped and shredded. It was 188. This kid was 230. Okay. You know, so everyone said Victor Richards is going to win this teenage America's Cup like nothing. Yeah. Went to the show. I smoked him because I was in shape. <laughs> That screwed up his head so bad because he goes, how can this smaller guy beat me? And I said, you're fat. Victor, you're fat. <laughs> you told so, him that? Yeah. So we almost had this fight backstage because he goes, <laughs> how can you beat me? But, you know, we ended up becoming good friends after that. It's funny because he had the deepest respect for me because I beat him in that teenage show. Yeah. So I could never beat him again. And then, he, you know, he noticed as I climbed up the ranks into the pro division you know, Victor always says, that guy screwed up my head because he beat me as a teenager, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, from as a teenager, then I started going into the men's division, the Jersey Cup, regional shows, which I won very easily. Went into the junior nationals, competed against then uh, a well-known, you know, young up-and-comer, David Hawk. Yeah. David Hawk was a favorite to win the junior nationals. And, of course, because he was in, from Pittsburgh – you know, Jim Mannion, he was, you know, he was there and one of the favorites as a light heavy. And I, went, I, want to, I want to back you up a second, Rich. When you were talking about the teenage, you said you missed the uh, teenage nationals. And mm -hmm. uh, I did the teenage Mr. America in Chicago and David Hawk did that show. And that was in 82. Were you and mad that you didn't go in against him in 82? Because yes. you probably could have beat him, huh? Because I could have beat him because he won the teenage nationals. And I went into that 82 into the America's Cup instead. Right. So, so you, knew, a, you knew of him back then, right? You knew of I David knew of back him then. He won the Teenage America, and I won the America's Cup, which didn't have as much you know, notoriety yeah. because yeah. you know he convinced me this was going to be a bigger show. It was in L.A. I went to L.A., and you're right. I got to go against David Hawk now in the Junior Nationals, which he was favored to win because he won the, the Teenage uh, Nationals. Right. Went into the Junior Nationals. Da David was a good uh, teenager. He was really good at that age. He was actually, he was actually a very good teenager. He was a good yeah. bodybuilder. Yeah. Uh, as um as a national bodybuilder, he was he was pretty you know he was really good as well. And then we finally had this rivalry in the junior nationals because, like I said, he won that teenage show that I didn't get to go against him. In which in the junior show I beat him. Yeah. And it, and that year, uh, that same year, went to San Jose oh, and went. Hold to, on one second, went, Rich. I want to talk about that. The junior nationals. Now that was. 83, so that was only the second one they ever had, right? Because Lee Haney won the first one in 82. Yes, you're right. So that was you, the second show that they had. And you were only and, 20 years old, and you're going in a national-level show, and you win the overall. I win the overall against uh, David Hawk, who was favored to win that show. Now, what did you weigh at that show, Rich, at the Junior Nationals? I was uh, around 210, um, 208, 210 as a heavyweight, 20 years old. Problem with is my physique then, you know, analyzing my, 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 my pictures, my legs were really big. My waist was a little stocky. I needed more delts. Um, and I just, I, I, like I said, I needed to, like, fix my proportions. I needed to get my shoulders more capped. 
my waist more streamlined, and I, I needed to bring down my legs to be a good symmetrical bodybuilder. But you were That's, going on you were going on stage at two ten at twenty years old, and a year before when you said you did the teenage, you were only like one eighty something, right? So what are you it, doing it, at one year to uh, get so much size? Well, when we talked, when I just said earlier, I didn't know much about dieting. And what I did was I was on a very extremely low carb diet. Mm -hmm. And I actually met up with another well-known trainer who gave me a little bit of tips. I mean, I, I, I didn't use him exclusively, but he, he, he helped me to get a guy named Bob Gruskin. Oh, yeah. He's Bob, a legend in the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. So Bob Gruskin helped a lot of national bodybuilders. So as a teenager, he saw me and he saw what I was doing. And I was eating 11, 1200 calories. He goes, Rich. You're over dieting. That's why you're not, you know, you're not big enough. But he goes, you got the potential, but you have to, you have to eat. So through Bob Gruskin, he started having me eat, you know, complex carbohydrates, six meals a day, right. you know, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So through Bob, he actually, you know, gave me a little bit of, you know, coaching. Although he wasn't really my coach, he kind of helped me a little bit. But he gave me, and he did some photo, you know, photographs on me that we we put out. But he's the one who basically helped me to then go from 188, you know, malnourished to 210, yeah. you know, in one year later, you know, as a as now a formidable national bodybuilder. What'd you weigh in the off season then, Rich? Uh, I ate a little bit too much when I was 20 years old. Yeah, I got as high as 255. Wow, 20? Yeah, 20 years old. Holy dollars. shit, that's, that's crazy. I was. Yeah, well, that's another story I could tell you about when when I moved to California with Lee Haney. Yeah, you know, call, call me Fat Boy. Yeah, we'll get but, to that uh, in a minute. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was two fifty five in the off season when I because I wanted to get bulk and gain as much size as I can, and then you yeah. know dive so, back down. But we all we all did that back then, though, right? Yeah. So that year, I won the junior nationals overall. They all pushed me to go into the nationals. Now I thought I wasn't ready you know, at 20 to go into the nationals, but I decided to go into the nationals. And in that show, it was in San Jose, um, decided to go into the show. And that year, Bob Paris won. Right. Second place was Rory Littemeyer. Right. The place was, um, Mike Christian. Right. Uh, fourth place was Matt Mendenhall and fifth place. I can't recall. Well, was Rich Gasparri. Yeah. <laughs> But it was another guy who actually dropped out, and I ended up getting the top five Jeff places. Williams, right? Jeff Williams, Jeff Williams, right? Yeah. Jeff Williams. Yeah. Jeff had fit but dropped out on the night show, which put me into top five in the heavyweights of a very, very tough lineup yeah. in the weight division. Now, how cool is that? Because a lot of people may not remember that name, Jeff Williams, but I remember that guy because I remember Weeder really liked him, and he was in Muscle Builder. Yeah, I think it was Muscle Builder or Muscle and Fitness. Uh, he was in there every every month. Remember, leading up to that yes. show, and yes. it was like, "Here's his, here's Jeff Williams' back routine. Here's Jeff Williams' chest routine." And then he was, I think, pissed off because he knew he wasn't going to beat Bob Paris or Roy Lidlmeyer or Mike Christian. So I read in uh, Muscle Builder that he went to Sea World in San Jose yeah. <laughs> instead of yeah. going to the night show. He went to Sea World. Yeah. And then you were originally in sixth, so you would have been out of that top five. Now at 20 years old, you move into the top five. Yes. So it was pretty exciting to end up on my first national show getting fifth place in the nationals, but going against legendary national bodybuilders when, you know, I read the magazines, I read about Rory Littemeyer, I read yeah. about Jeff Williams, I read about, you know, uh, Mike Christian, they were all being talked about. And I was this unknown kid from New Jersey slipping into the top five because Jeff Williams decides to, no, not go into the show. It was the sea world. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now, was what, did you, what did you feel, Rich, with going up against those guys? I know you had a lot of confidence and you were really competitive, but, I mean, being 20 years old, traveling from New Jersey to California, I mean, that had to be intimidating, huh? I, I was a very, like, confident kid. You know, I went in because I was winning all these shows. I was going to the Nationals to be a winner. Um, and it was intimidating because it was going to be the first time that I got to travel. So I, I never really went anywhere. Yeah. And now I'm playing going five hours to the West Coast. Although I went to compete in that America's Cup beating, you know, oh, yeah. like I said, in, in that show, Victor right. Richards. You know, I felt really good that it's not just about size. It's about conditioning. Yeah. And I still had, you know, good conditioning going into, you know, that national show and, and you know, and potential. Um, 
So I did have confidence, but when I went there and I took, you know, my, you know, my stuff off and I got to see, you know, Rory Littemeyer and then I saw Bob Paris and then I was like, wow, these guys are really good. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was a little bit in, a little bit intimidated, but I still went in there and gave my best that I could. So, I mean, it was a great feeling and, and that's where I got to meet, um, Ed Connors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who had, who was the owner of Gold's Gym that had a bunch of Gold's Gyms. Um, he came up to me and said, Hey, you know, you looked really good. You know, I, would you be consider moving out to LA um, and running one of my gyms, you know, in the Valley, we're going to open up the gym and uh, it was then Reseda. Mm -hmm. um, so for me now, I was actually going to Rutgers University in college, was a pre-med student you know, now going into the Nationals, coming in fifth. So then I had to decide. It was two years into college saying, should I move out to L.A. and take this gym as a manager of a Gold's Gym, uh, take this job, and then pursue my career to be a, a bodybuilder? I wanted to win the Nationals. Right, right. So I went to my parents, and of course, they were old school Italians from Italy. And I said, Dad, I want to I wanna take a leave of absence from school. And I want to take one year off. I want to move to L.A., I want to pursue my dream to be a pro bodybuilder. And I go, what are you nuts? <laughs> what are you, to you want to be a pro bodybuilder? What is a pro bodybuilder? I said, well, I start showing the magazines. They know I was competing. He goes, you can make money doing this. I said, well, if I turn pro, you know, I could be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know? <laughs> so, you know, they wanted, they wanted to see me happy. And I said, listen, if I, if I don't win in one year, I, I'm going to come back to Jersey. I'm going to finish school. Okay. So I, 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 that was my, you know, you know, that's what I said to my parents. And that was my promise to my parents. Just please give me one year. Yeah. So they said, okay, move out to LA. So now Rich, your, who, who were your, uh, besides Arnold, who were your idols like that were currently competing at that time? Cause I mean, the MPC was pretty much new and, um, professional bodybuilding wasn't as advanced as it is today, you know, where it's more structured and everybody wants to get their pro card and, you know, but, uh, back then, the um, IFBB was really just starting really to expand its pro pro division, you know? Well, I, I was like anybody else that back in the day, your information came from the magazine. So yeah. Joe Weider's magazine was the more prevalent magazine. So who did I, who were my heroes? Tom Platts was one of my heroes. Danny Padilla, you know, was one of my heroes. Cause now these guys were, you know, shorter, yeah. a little shorter than me, you know, shorter or close to my height. Um, Back then, you know, Samir Banu, um, you know, they were all in the 80s. And then I, you know, I, I saw guys like Berto Fox that I was impressed with. Yeah. Rock Robinson, although I didn't have the same look like him, I was very impressed with Robbie Robinson because he was just a freak to me because of his bicep peaks and his little waist. And, yeah. you know, his double bicep to me was the best ever. Yeah. You know, so those are guys moving to L.A. that, and I was going to get to see my heroes and train in the gym. So... I moved out to LA, you know, 20 years old. And for the first couple months, the gym wasn't ready. Um, I got to live in Venice beach. So living in Venice beach, I got to train, I, I, of course, in the Mecca. Now I was 20 years old, <laughs> trained the Mecca. And to me, it was just like the greatest experience in the world. I was like a kid in a candy store, yeah. train, seeing pros everywhere. And I got to see these, these guys that I read in the magazine, although they didn't compete, they became very famous, the barbarians. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was doing legs one day, and I was doing some crazy leg workouts. I, I can do, you know, I could do uh, 405 for, you know, 40 reps. Wow. Some crazy stuff all the way down to the ground. Um, you know, I was, always, I was always kind of follow or look at Tom Platz's workouts and try to follow those workouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, you could do reps all day, uh, you know, with squats. So, you know what? I did this workout. So, one day – one of the barbarians came to me and um, said, hey, I'll work in with you on legs. And, uh, and they weren't known for their legs. So I did, I forgot which one I did it with. So I did legs with one of the barbarian brothers. I got to the point, I started pushing them, you know, and I kept adding more weight. So yeah. the one time, what I did is I did the 405 and I did the, my 40 rep 405, you know, to the show, <laughs> show up in the gym. So I would do them all. And then I got to like 30 and I made like, I made believe I was struggling. And then I just went nine more, boom, 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 boom. And then, <laughs> then on the tenth, when I go, this one's for you. I went all the way to the ground, stayed there for three seconds, brought it up, and threw it on the rack. <laughs> he looked at me, he go, 
who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I go, I'm Rich Gasparri. I go, the next national bodybuilding champion. <laughs> so I already had that cockiness to me when I was wow. when I was that age. Because he was like, wow. He goes, you just did. <laughs> and he ended up throwing up. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How, how heavy could you go on squats, Rich? What was your heaviest? Uh, weight? My best squat was um, for two reps was seven eighty five. Holy shit! Wow, that's crazy. I'm very strong, but I had to cut. I had to stop. It's funny when we talk about squats. I got to L.A. and I loved showing off that I could do so much squats. Yeah, it's, I got to L.A. I stopped doing squats for a whole year. I stopped doing heavy legs for a whole year because now I, I needed to hone down my legs and build up my upper body more, build up my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, widen my back, streamline my waist, and get my legs because they were already big enough, just better shape to go into the nationals. And where, what where, I did, wanted, where did you get that idea, Rich? Because I remember, I remember when you did that. Because I remember you were sort of like a little bit blocky when you went in '83 at the nationals and the junior nationals, and then you made that decision to go down from heavyweight to light heavyweight. Did you come up with that idea yourself, or did somebody advise you to do that? I, I had. I, I did look at my pictures and I did assess, you know, my physique saying this is what I need to do. Yeah. I, you know, and then I needed to, even, although I love doing legs, you know, bodybuilding is not about just training your favorite body part, but building your body properly. So I was right. like, you know, listen to Arnold and what he would say is like, you know, build your weaker body parts, not your stronger body parts. Right. So I kind of like went on my own, although I had other people tell me, you know, you're a little blocky, you need to bring your waist down. You're not going to be a good national bodybuilder. And I always wanted to, you know, all these people that were saying I couldn't do it, I wanted to show that I could. Yeah. So um, I, I, I just, I kind of figured it out myself to do this. And that's when I got to finally work in the gym and got to meet somebody who watched me train so hard and said, I want you to be my training partner. And that was Lee Haney. Wow. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, you had to attract a lot of attention training with that kind of intensity and that kind of weight, even from the pros, right? Pros were so impressed with me. Bertle Fox was impressed with me. Really? Bertle, Bertle was known for being really strong. And I, I can, I mean, when it came to, I mean, my bench was 520. You know, I can handle 150, 160 pound dumbbells on presses. Wow. Uh, I came from a, that, that little hardcore gym, health and strength was a, was a, was a powerlifting gym. So they really taught me about lifting heavy, but, when I got to meet Lee Haney, he watched me train and he goes, you're sick. He goes, you're so intense. He goes, I got I to gotta like hone you down and teach you to be a bodybuilder. Oh, really? so, when I train, so when I trained with him, you know, I was lifting heavy weights and I, I had kind of a jerky form and I started watching Lee train and, and I was amazed by Lee's physique. Remember, he didn't win the, na he didn't win the Mr. Olympia. He won the nationals. He just placed third. I got to meet him when he placed third in his first Mr. Olympia. Right. So right. I got to see this guy, and this guy wants me to be his training partner. Unbelievable. And, Unbelievable. and I was like, I'll do it. Yeah, I love it. I want to be your training partner. And I got to just watch him train and learn from him. Everything with him was was like he always used to say, you know, stimulate, don't annihilate. Right. Because he would right. train a muscle, really squeeze his muscle, squeeze his chest. And he was strong. When, when there was times that I watched him do bench – you know, he wouldn't bench that much, but then when he wanted to show off, he, he would do four plates and rep it out hmm. just on hmm. bench presses. So he was strong, but he didn't necessarily always push strength. He always pushed the feel on the lifts and squeezing the weight and, and working the muscle. And that's when I started switching around my training, you know. And another thing is when he looked at me, he saw me. I was, he said, are you a power lifter? I go, no, I'm a bodybuilder. He goes, well, you're really fat. He goes, if you <laughs> want to be a bodybuilder, you don't need to stay that fat. I said, well, I'm bulking up. He goes, that's that's crap. He goes, you're a fat boy. He goes, stop eating crap and start eating right. And you know what? I, I started listening to him. And, you know, I always say thank you, Lee, because, you know, he taught me a lot just to, you know, just to get my body, you know, in sync and learn my body. So I started eating better, um, started training the way he said is, you know, is, is training the muscle to failure, feeling the muscle. Mm -hmm. So the body parts that I needed to bring up, like my shoulders or my back, <clears throat> I always had a great chest, my arms. I started training those body parts with Lee um, and really getting them to come up. Now, Lee had weaker legs and weaker calves. So for me, I trained Lee to get his calves up, train his legs hard. So him and I really worked well together. And I was the type of guy, I was, I was, 
I didn't say cocky. I was very confident. So a lot of people would be intimidated training with Lee. I would push him because mm -hmm. I would do something and push him on a weight. And he'd get mad because I actually – he had respect that I was like this guy who would push him hard. Yeah. And that's why he would train with me. I wasn't just there like a puppy dog. I would, you know, sit there and challenge him. And we both just had this great synergy when we trained together. And that was 83 going into my first nationals and Mr. Universe. Now, did you guys train like uh, six days a week? How long, how much were, how were you training back then, Rich? <clears throat> we were training six days a week, three on, one off, three on, okay. one off. And then when we got close to the show, it was six street, six days straight, twice a day. Twice a day, Train, yeah. I, training, training body parts twice a week. Okay, it was, yeah. It was old school, Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Train, and that's And that's what we did when we started getting ready for the show. Getting off track just a little bit, uh, what do you think about the way a lot of bodybuilders train today? Because – I come from the same era as you do, and I remember how hard everybody trained back then in the 80s because they had all these little hardcore gyms, and it was like everybody in the gym, <clears throat> whether they were training for a show or not, everybody was training hardcore. I, You know, I have respect for the bodybuilders today because maybe we did overtrain because I, I see top pros now training their body part once a week. Yeah. Um I do believe if there's weaker body parts, you can train it twice a week. But I, I've watched now guys grow, you know, athletes that I had like Flex Lewis train once a week. And yeah. now I watch guys like, you know, uh, Branch who trains once a week, but really, really hard. And I maybe we were training, you know, overtraining back then. I mean, I didn't feel that way when I was younger. I mean, now to try to do twice a week a body part at my age is, is a little hard to yeah. do, yeah. you know. And now I'm still, I train five days a week, you know, doing my body parts once a week. But, um, but I mean, just the, the training intensity, too. I mean, doing 40 reps at 405. I mean, that, that yeah. takes a certain amount well, guys, of uh, hardcore guys intensity. Do, guys don't do that. And, I mean, right. I, you know, I've seen guys really train hard. Like, I'm very impressed with, you know, Branch is one of my athletes. He's a hard training guy. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I push him at 50. I sit there and train with him in the gym. Now, he's, he's, a, he's a, I'm really still strong on shoulders. So I get to push him. He's amazed at how strong I am. And he goes, damn, at 50, you're pushing me. And I <laughs> push him. And I started slowing down a little bit because I started getting injuries. That last yeah. work that I did with him, I was doing 110 on front laterals. And I, I pulled my brachialis muscle. And I said, you know what? I can't do this. They're crazy. <laughs> I try to keep up with these guys. Right. Um, no, I just, I think the intensity we had back then is so, like, so much more. And I tell these bodybuilders, shoot, if I train with you, you know, in my 20s, I, yeah. I kill you. Yeah. I kill you. And it's laugh. <laughs> That's why I tell the young guys in the gym, too. <laughs> yeah, it says it was a totally different mindset, right. you know, to train a muscle and just to just to train it to just total exhaustion. I mean, I trained for Olympias where my the blood vessels in my eyes would burst yeah. from the type of training. I don't know if that's good for you, but that's <laughs> right. how hard I would that's how hard I would train. Right, right. All right, so, so let's now, you and Lee are both training then, and he's, like you said, he's training for the Olympia because he took third the year before, and you're training for the Nationals because you got to win now because uh, you told your parents you'd be back if you didn't. So yeah. you go into the Nationals now as a light heavyweight. What did you weigh for that show, Rich? Well, again, I trained so hard, and I, and I felt I did over diet. I ended up going into the Nationals, totally different package from when I won the Junior, the junior Nationals 210. I go into the Nationals at 189. Okay. So okay. now a totally different physique, more symmetrical, little waist, but I, I, I felt a little flat. You know, I went into the Nationals flat. Going to that show, that year, um, a guy who came in second was almost, I think, two years in a row was Moses Maldonado, if yeah. you remember, light heavyweight. Yeah. That was the guy that I felt I needed to beat, Moses Maldonado. Then there was a couple other guys I can't recall all the names. Tom Twilliger and J.J. Marsh. Tom Twilliger was one of the guys. Yeah, J.J. Um, Marsh. Came, yeah, J.J. Marsh, who came in that top five slot. So it was J.J. Marsh, myself, Tom Twilliger. Um, those those were the top guys that went into the na into the in that Nationals. Yeah. When it's the show, it was funny. J.J. Marsh, Tom Twilliger, Moses Maldonado all got first place votes. I, I didn't get any first place votes. I got straight seconds. <laughs> and I went into the Nationals. Winning the Nationals, you win by the lowest score. Right. One first place vote winning the Nationals. Because <laughs> of my 
because I had the lowest score. Yeah. Not not getting one first place. Yeah, I remember I remember reading that. I wanted to ask you if that was true because I remember reading that in the magazine. Which, you know, I felt I, I could have went into that show 190, 195 easily if I was fuller. I just kind of overdied in going to that show. And if I think about it went where I should have been, I would I would have won it easily. But still on my shape and symmetry and conditioning, like I said, straight seconds. And I was able to pull it off and win that show. Right. Uh, two weeks later was the um, Universe. Mr. Universe. Yeah. Now, back then, which is different from today, today you win the Nationals, you win your class, you turn pro. Back then, you win your, your class, you win, you either, even if you win the overall, you have to go into the Mr. Universe, and you got to win Mr. Universe. If you don't win Mr. Universe, you got to go back into the Nationals again. Right. Uh, you know, so that's what happened to Moses Maldonado. He got right. to go twice into the world championships. No, he didn't go. No, he didn't go. He won, I think, once, but he didn't, he didn't get to win right. the, uh, the, the world championships. I get to go into the world championships, which was then in Las Vegas. Now, for those two weeks, I started eating. You know, because I saw I was kind of flat. I started eating and eating, mm -hmm. you know, going into the show because Lee goes, you're too flat. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're dehydrated. You're, you know, just get yourself a little fuller. So I started filling out. So I went into the, um, into the universe from 189. I went into like, and I still, I think I should have been bigger. I was 192. Okay. So okay. I went into the Mr. Universe light heavyweights at 192. Feist the young American here from oh. New Jersey again. And he's playing to the crowd right away. <laughs> he has it, and he knows it. <laughs> Rich Gaspari, the United States, has got a good routine going. You know, he's young, Chris. He's only 19. 19, isn't that sick? 19. Imagine him at 25. <laughs> he's got that smile. He's got that charisma. Very animated. He's sure of himself. He has an assuredness about him. He goes into the launch pose very easily. Without looking down, if you notice, he did not look down on the floor. He knew where his footing would be. He just did it. Very hard. What I've seen thus far, the first four, uh, like this Barry and Romulus, the last guy we saw. Tough. Very tough. Calf guys, upper body. You have to really be competitive to be a bodybuilder. Yes, you do. It's really against yourself. You compete against yourself. You compete with others on stage, but it's really against yourself. Your own progress. For the layman looking in, it wants to keep that middle down. What about isometric in the stomach? I've heard it. you stop at a stoplight, you pull it in, you pull it through. Oh, screen. you were telling me about that. A friend of yours does that. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's a reminder. Anytime you flex something or contract it, you're increasing that muscularity and you're burning fat, really. You're burning calories. All right. So uh, it'll be coming off. We'll get a chance to, uh, to visit with you. That year in the Nationals, the overall winner was Mike Christian. Yeah. So he beat me in the he beat me in the you know the Nationals. We go into the universe. Again, another guy who was favored to win was this guy named Gromulus. Yeah, Joseph Gromulus. Yeah. Joseph Joseph Gromulus was from Germany. He was the favorite to win, you know, the Mr. Universe. He was a big dude, right? Big, big, thick guy, but yeah. really blocky waist. Right. Now I ended up being a lot more symmetrical than him. And this guy was just a blob of muscle, you know. So going to that show, he's favored to win. In the end, I end up winning, you know, by slight hair. I end up winning the Mr. Universe. Yeah. All right, who's it going to be? And here they are together, the last two. Who made it? In second place, winning the silver medal. From Germany, Josef Grolmus. That tells it. Well, you could flip a coin on that one. They were very, very close. Very right? close. So, there's a very happy youngster, 19 years of age. Oh, what a future. What a future indeed. The Gromulus from Germany who looks very, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, Josef Grolmus is smiling for his second place. Give him a hand. Good sportsmanship. I don't want to be one on one. And here is our World Light Heavyweight Bodybuilding Champion, Mr. Universe 1984, from USA, Rich Gaspari. I've just been informed that Rich Gaspari just pulled this out the last few seconds. 
in the pose down presented. because he was second going By into this final Joe round. And ben Chris, it's and interesting. You know, we are in the United States, but there's only Wheeler one American judge. Upwards to 60 countries are represented. So uh, it is not like being on the home board. At the, at the night show and beating Gromulus, which pissed off uh, the German judge, uh, a good friend with Arnold. Um, Albert Busek. Albert Busek was yeah. the judge. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny now we're best of friends. And he has the greatest respect for me. He goes, right. you know what? I'm glad you won because you continued on. Gromulus, you know, yeah. didn't go anywhere. And although I wanted Gromulus to win, you were true, the true champion that ended up becoming one of the best bodybuilders in the world. But, you know, it was, it was just then I realized, oh, my God, I'm a pro bodybuilder now. Yeah. I won, I won the Mr. Universe. You know, I was Mr. Universe now. And I kept saying, Wow, I'm Mr. Universe. You know, and it was just <laughs> cool. It was a cool feeling, you know, to then be this different bodybuilder. Well, I turned pro. That, but that uh, that universe too, Rich. That was cool because it was covered by ESPN, and I mean, they did a huge. I think it was a two hour broadcast, right? And Chris Dickerson was the uh, MC or no, yeah. the uh, interviewer. He interviewed you backstage. Yes, so it was uh, Chris Dickerson, who also Mr. Olympia, um, and I was like I said, this young aspiring kid. You know, just turning 21. Uh, Rich, uh, did your routine go the way you hoped it would? Yeah, I, I did pretty good. I remembered everything. I may have just been a little bit of a flub, but I don't think they noticed. Yeah, did you get a cramp up there? Uh, no, not really. Uh -huh. no. You look very good. You're Thank definitely you. in the runner circle. Okay. See what happens later, Rich. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, and to me, it was just this unbelievable experience to now become this pro. I got to meet Lou Ferrigno. You know, mm -hmm. my hero, you know, he was backstage, you know, I said, wow, you're really good. Um, I mean, it was just a really cool feeling then, you know, winning that show and realizing, wow, you know what? I'm pro. So I, I know, also want to mention one other thing, Rich, I don't want to interrupt you, interrupt you but um, people may not realize that 21 years old winning the universe and turning pro, not only turning pro, but winning the Mr. Universe at 21, I think. That record was set by, I think, Lou Ferrigno, who also yes. won it at 21. And you you and him are the youngest, I think, IFBB Mr. Universe winners, as far as I yes. know. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things when he was backstage. He goes, you know, I won Mr. Universe at 21. And now you're, you know, yeah. now you yeah. put in my footsteps. And that's some stuff we were talking about. So, yeah, that's true. The only thing he said a difference because he goes, I, I won the overall. You didn't win the overall. <laughs> I did, you know, at 21. What would you think so, of uh, Mike Christian back then, Rich? Mike Christian, I thought, I mean, he was very impressive. Um, when you look at him, his shoulders and his back, you know, his back was so lumpy. Yeah. Uh, amazing upper body. Yeah. You know, I felt I had him because he had, you know, weaker legs. You know, his legs were always his weak point. Yeah. But when you look at his upper body, he should have been Mr. Olympia. If he had legs, he, he could have probably beaten Lee Haney on, on his physique alone. I think also, I mean – I had this mentality, this winning mentality, and a very like just positive. I went into shows always positive. You know, Mike, I think you could play with his head a little bit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when it's shows, you know, I can always play with his head a little bit more. Yeah. Although I thought he was great, I'd have to like try to like psych him out, you know, you know, and going into shows because, you, you know, did you think I, he deserved the, the nationals that year? I think he did. Yeah. I think he, I mean, he, he looks at his best thick you know his back was thick his upper body was thick i forgot who came second against him in that in Barry that DeMay. Barry Barry DeMay, right? DeMay. Yeah. no no in the nationals barry de was not oh so, um barry de came second in oh, the universe matt, matt mendenhall matt mendenhall again yeah. came second you know yeah. i think it was his third second you know or second yeah. second yeah yeah and he yeah. won against um and never turned pro but yeah i, I felt he did deserve it i mean he, he, he became a formidable pro as well, you know, moving forward as a, as a pro. But yeah. I went back home, you know, they had this big celebration in this town that I was from. You know, so you, you, moved back to, uh, you moved back to New Jersey then after that, huh? After I won, I decided to move back home. Now, what was exciting about it is I didn't go back to school, but I pursued my career as a pro bodybuilder. Okay. Now, what does that mean? I ended up getting a lot of calls for right away for seminars, um, you know, guest posings. So right away I showed my parents, I'm making money. Let me ride this wave and let me see what kind of money I can make. And, you know, I'll do this for the next, you know, year or two, whatever this is. And I'll go back to school. 
Now, what well, was the what was the general feeling about you as a pro, Rich? I mean, did people take you seriously? I, I know you made a huge transformation in '85, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But when you first turned pro at that universe, did people say, "Oh, this guy's going to be an up and comer," or were people just sort of overlooking you? Yes, everybody overlooked me. <laughs> I had I had every writer. Bill Dobbins, I made him eat his words, um, and a lot of the writers just basically said, "This guy's a one-hit wonder, mm -hmm. he's universe, and then he's going to be gone." Yeah. So those guys didn't realize that I, I I was a heavyweight at one time, and that I could put on masks. But now that I had the symmetry, all I had to do was put back on the mask. Hmm. So, um, like 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 you said, no one thought that I would be a formidable pro until 1985 at the night of the champions right so went back home and you know it was funny because lee haney you know lee haney moved to georgia i moved back to new jersey lee haney already saw that you know what you still got the you still got the eye of the tiger because we you know we trained afterward when he won his mr olympia um i was still training with him and i stayed in la you know a couple months afterwards and then okay. said you know what i'm going to go home he wants to go home I said, we could do all our, you know, publicity and stuff, get to L.A. for, you know, take pictures and go back home. He knew that. He goes, you have the eye of the tiger. He goes, I know you're going to be something as a pro. Hmm. So I started training. And it's funny. You remember I was 188, but normally my weight was like 210. Right. Uh, at 188, I had a different shape now, bigger shoulders, you know, better back, better arms, you know, streamlined, streamlined legs. I started filling out now going into this night of the champions. Well, I went into this night of the champions at 210, but a wholly different physique. Oh, yeah, you were freaky. So I went into this show, and it's funny. I get backstage. No one knew who I was. They don't even recall that I was this guy who won the universe. But then I took my stuff off, and they're like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and they go, that's the guy who won the nationals at 188. How the hell did he go to one ten, you know, two ten? Yeah, and that good. And it was Albert Beckles that was in that show that was favored to win. Tony Pearson was in a show. Um, Mike Christian, Bob, Mike Christian, Bob Birdsong. Yeah, favorites to win was of course Albert Beckles, Mike Christian, Bob Birdsong, and then this unknown guy, Rich Gasparri, goes to the show and just. Uh, takes everyone by surprise <laughs> going into that show where I pushed Albert Beckles yeah. really hard. And actually when he won the show, everyone booed it because they felt, yeah. you know, I should have taken that show. I thought you should have won. I thought you should have won based on the pictures. Yeah. So I, you know, I came in big, hard, ripped, thick, you know, separated. Um, you know, Albert was Albert, you know, great, great bodybuilder. But yeah. again, I was this new up and comer and, you know, they just knew, that none of the champions put me on the map. Yeah, that's every magazine wanted to write about me from Bob Kenny to Joe Weider to everyone said, Here's the favorite for the Olympia now. Yeah, I go, so you I'm were on the guy. cover of Flex too, weren't you, Rich? I was on the cover of Flex, the cover of Muscle Fitness, the cover of uh, Muscle Mag. Now, all of a sudden, becoming this from this unknown, they becoming favorite, one of the favorites for the Mr. Olympia a year later. Yeah, which was just mind boggling. Wow. What did uh, Mike Christian feel when you beat him at that? Because he, he had to feel like he was ahead of you at the Nationals, and then six months later, you kill him. I think it just killed him because he just couldn't understand how did this guy who I beat easily in the Nationals now is beating me. Yeah. It really, like, just it just it just messed up his head that I came out of nowhere to beat this guy. <laughs> so we, we had a rival, as you know, we had a rivalry as well. Yeah. You know. I had the Lee Labrada robbery, but we also had the Mike Christian robbery. Yeah. Uh, going to my first Olympia in Brussels, Belgium, um, and going into that show, ended up coming top three in my first Mr. Olympia at 22 years old. Wow. That's amazing. Well, Rich, let's take a, a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that Olympia. And then we're going to talk about some of your Olympia escapades against uh, Lee Haney.